All right, Chem 107 Lab. Today, or this week, I should say again, we'll be doing the copper reaction cycle. And hopefully you have either watched the video or are planning on watching the video. For now, I'm just going to kind of go over what I expect of you guys. So the first thing I want to start with is um, we have all of these reactions written out for you. So you don't have to guess about any of the reactions. Sometimes we're going to ask you for half reactions, stuff like that. you got to figure that out. But I wanted to look at this first reaction, oxidation of copper. I want to remind you, hopefully this is a reminder, that oxidation, oops, uh, sorry about that, oxidation is loss of electrons. O-I-L, that's oil, and reduction is gain of electrons, R-I-G, so the acronym is oil rig, help you remember that oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain. So let's look at that first reaction down there. Um, so we have copper solid. And I'm just going to look at the copper for a second. This is what we would call a half reaction. We have copper solid going to this copper right here is Cu2 plus. That's copper 2, and that's aqueous plus 2 electrons. Okay. The solid copper lost those two electrons, and that's how we get that 2 plus. So this is the oxidation of copper. And I want to share one more thing with you. Um, it's going to help you answer a question later. This ion is blue. Okay, when it is in solution, it is blue. Keep that in mind. Uh, the next reaction, precipitation of copper 2 hydroxide. Pretty straightforward precipitation reaction. You'll need to do the uh, net ionic equation for that and pick out the spectator ions. Okay, If you don't remember how to do that, shoot me an email. Um, let's see, for the most part, these are fairly straightforward. Step five, there are two reactions concurrent, uh, and we'll, I'll talk about those in a second, and you'll see those in the video, okay? So go ahead and read through all this stuff. Uh, I do want to point out this equation here, percent recovery. Okay, percent recovery. Basically, percent recovery is just what you end up with over what you started with. So at the end of the lab, you're going to have some mass of copper, you divide that by the mass of copper that you started with, multiply it by 100, that's what you, that's your percent recovery. If if you start with a gram and you end with a gram, your percent recovery is 100. If you um, start with a gram and you end up with half a gram, your percent recovery is 50%. That means you lost half of it somewhere along the line. And it is entirely possible to, to get a percent recovery, especially in this lab, over 100%. There's lots of things that can go wrong. All right, so let's go through some of these questions because you the procedure doesn't mean anything us to anything to us anymore because uh, it's all spelled out in that video. Do, 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 do. Here we go. Uh, pre lab, go ahead and do that. It's fairly, should be fairly straightforward. Uh, a lot of blank pages. Sorry about that. Okay, data you're going to get from the other video. Again, straightforward, no problems. Um, and then these questions. There's a lot of questions. Oops, I guess I got, just got an email. All right. Um, all right, let me mute my computer there. So uh, you should record your observations. Again, you know, in the first reaction, you'll watch it. You, you see some brown gas evolving. You see bubbles. You see the solution turning from uh, a clear color to a, a greenish color, and the uh, copper dissolves. And then... Um, once the copper is all dissolved, we add some water and the solution turns light blue. Should be something like that, okay? What ion causes the solution to be colored? If only I had already told you that. Oh, come on. Me and technology don't always get along. I don't know why that's not working anymore. Oh, well. Um, here, let's just circle it. What ion? I already told you the ion, okay? What is the oxidizing agent used to dissolve the copper? And over here, these should be chemicals or ions. 
Oh, and when I say ion, ion has a charge. So don't just tell me copper. Is it copper one? Is it copper two? Is it copper 34? What is it? Tell me which copper it is. Oxidizing agent. We added an acid to the copper. That's the oxidizing agent. How many electrons were exchanged? Whoa, I just realized I wrote my half reaction wrong up above. Let me fix that. Copper solid goes to copper two plus aqueous plus two electrons. I think I only wrote one electron, but we lost two electrons there. Oh, I just gave you the answer. What is the limiting reactant? Well, when we add the acid to the copper, which one runs out first? I'll give you a hint. It's the copper cycle, isn't it? Okay, think about that. Um, step two, record your observations. That's straightforward again. Um, balance the net ionic equation. Again, straightforward. Spectator ions, okay? When we write the spectator ions, we have to write, there's um, more than one for this reaction, and we have to write ions. Ions have charges. I say that over and over again because uh, usually in this class or in this lab, I'm looking over your shoulder, kind of keeping track of you, but I can't do that now. So remember, ions have charges. So it wouldn't, you know, for instance, if it was potassium, it wouldn't just be potassium. Now let's write it over here. It wouldn't just be potassium. It would be potassium plus, okay? And if it was chloride, it wouldn't just be Cl. It would be Cl minus. So the answer might look something like that. That is not the answer, but it would look something like that. All right, step three. Again, pretty straightforward. Now, this question B, what is being removed by decanting? Decanting is when we pour off that liquid. Okay, now, students often say, you know, just something very general. I am looking for ions here. I want a list of ions or, or chemicals. Don't tell me we're removing water because the water stays behind. Um, but I want ions and I'll give you a hint. Another hint, it's the spectator ions. So when we do the decanting, we're removing spectator ions through the whole process. Uh, observations, again, straightforward. Balanced equation, spectator ions, straightforward. Reduction of copper. Okay, in step five, there are two reactions going on at once. Um, one of those reactions is the reduction of copper. So the um, zinc is dissolving, the copper's uh, coming out of solution. Balanced net ionic equation, again, pretty simple. Spectator ions, again, pretty simple, okay? And the reducing agent, what did we add? We added a metal, okay, and it's swapping places with the copper. The metal that we added, that's the reducing agent, all right? And then we add excess zinc, which is a metal, um, to the reaction, and we got to get rid of that excess zinc. So there's acid in there, and the zinc is going to react with the acid. It's going to produce a gas. Go back and look at the reactions for all of these. Balance that an equation. Again, this is all straightforward. And then when we remove decanting, or what are we removing by decanting? Again, spectator ions. Okay. And one of those things is going to have zinc in it. We're going to have zinc and, and uh, uh, another spectator ion. Okay. So then you just fill this all out, or fill out the post lab rather, and turn it in. Shouldn't be too hard. If you have questions, send me an email. I hope you guys have a good week.